Uh, so, it is my pleasure to announce Michael Rachin in the Proof Theory Visual Seminar, who will be speaking on joint work with Emanuele Friteon, far beyond Goodman's theorem. Take it away, Michael. Yeah, good morning. Um, so what this title is about will be revealed as we go along. Okay, so <clears throat> the question of to AC or not to AC uh, was important at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, Zermelo had proved that uh, the reals can be well ordered. And then Borel canvassed opinions of the most prominent French mathematicians of his generation, including Adama, Baer, and Lebec. And uh, so this was the upshot of it. There was some, he published something in the Mathematische Annalen in 1905. It seems to me that the objection against it is also valid for every reasoning where one assumes an arbitrary choice made an uncountable number of times for such reasoning does not belong in mathematics. So very strong rebuttal of the axiom of choice. Uh, the opinions of Adama, Baer and Lebec were that, okay, Adama sided with Samelo, whereas Baer and Lebec agreed with Borel. Okay, so the question of AC, uh, Hilbert, of course, suggested another way of dealing with it, namely not to view it as a metaphysical question, but just to see what can you do with AC and maybe you are able to uh, use it as an ideal element which can be eliminated afterwards. Uh, and so in classical set theory, we know that if we add the axiom of choice or even the generalized continuum hypothesis, this will be a conservative over ZF uh, for arithmetic sentences. So Gödel used the constructive hierarchy, of course, and you can even go further in the Schoenfield uh, via the Schoenfield absoluteness lemma showed that uh, Basically, you can go up to pi one four. Okay, in uh, the constructive world, if you deal with intuitionistic uh, theories, the situation is a little bit more complicated. So the proof uh, that um, ZFC is conservative over ZF for arithmetic sentences just follows from yeah the constructible hierarchy. Uh, in the realm of constructive theories, um, there's a famous result due to Goodman. Uh, so if you look at um, Heiting arithmetic, by the way, can you see my, can you see the cursor there and move around something? Yes. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah, so this HA omega stands for Heiting arithmetic in all finite types. And then you can add the axiom of choice for, for all of these types. And Goodman showed that this is conservative over HA for arithmetic sentences. And the proof is rather complicated. And he had two approaches, one via his theory of constructions and, and later uh, a nice way of um, slicing the proof into two parts, namely one part being realizability uh, and another part being forcing. Okay. I will uh, define these axioms A, C, Sigma, Tau later. <clears throat> uh, now, uh, in classical set theory, we have several tools for showing independence and conservativity results. And uh, one is the inner models, for instance, L, and another one is forcing. Um, permutation models as well. Now going to the um, intuitionistic world, one might also uh, look at the constructible hierarchy. So now I'm looking at basically intuitionistic set theories. So IZF stands for the intuitionistic version of IZ, uh, of uh, Samuel Frankel set theory. And you can do the constructible hierarchy constructively. I'm just uh, stealing a title from Richard Matthews, who gave a talk a while ago in Leeds. Uh, and the result is that, well, the constructible hierarchy also um, works to some extent, namely 
on the basis of IZF, you can show that L is a model of IZF, and you can show that um, in L, V is the same as L. Also, this was done by um, Laura Priscilla. So she looked at this in the, in the case of kripke platex so the intuitionistic version of kripke platex set theory, the same obtains there. But then also uh, Richard Matthews showed that um, L is uh, a somewhat unregulated entity uh, in the intuitionistic world. So you cannot show that all ordinals are an L. And, and finally, you can also show that if, when it comes to constructive semilo Franco set theory, that constructive semilo Franco set theory cannot show that its axioms hold in the constructible hierarchy. So it turns out that this is a somewhat you can do the constructal hierarchy, but it's somewhat um, useless in this context. Uh, in the realm of intuitionistic theories, you have many tools to show independence and conservativity. Uh, one of the oldest and most successful, perhaps, is realizability. And then there are lots of other methods. You can, of course, the Kripke models, Forcing and heighting valued models, so the intuitionistic version of Boolean valued models, that also works for intuitionistic uh, theories. And, and there's many more tools like sheaf models, topological models, categorical models, and also proof theoretic methods. Uh, but today uh, I will just use the oldest method, realizability. Okay, just a brief look at the axioms of IZF. So this is the intuitionistic version of ZF. And so we have the same, many times we have the same axioms, extensionality, pairing, union, infinity, full separation, power set. Uh, instead of replacement, replacement is somewhat awkward intuitionistically. Uh, instead of replacement, one uses a strengthening collection. Um, instead of foundation, one uses the positive set induction scheme. And that's it. So one basically the idea is one makes uh, one changes the underlying logic of ZF and makes uh, minimal changes. Uh, I already talked about constructive Samuel Franco uh, set theory, CZF. Uh, this is a set theory which was first proposed by Myhill as a background system, a background framework from constructive mathematics. And then later, Peter Axel uh, wanted to connect it to Martin Bluff type theory. And he defined an interpretation of my health system in Martin Bluff type theory. And he found that some of the axioms can actually be uh, expanded. OK, so CZF has extensionality pairing union infinity as before, separation is restricted. So bounded formulas, just to bounded formulas, well, bounded formula is one where uh, the quantifiers appear as for all X in A and there is a Y in B, only in this restricted form. Uh, instead of power set, one has subset collection. Um, this is an extension basically of my hills axiom uh, called exponentiation, namely, if you have two sets A and B, then the collection of all functions from A to B is a set. And uh, furthermore, CZF has an even stronger collection scheme. Uh, so you have this, the same premise as in uh, the collection scheme, but then the conclusion is stronger. Uh, so in the collection, you basically find a B so that you can collect that you have enough witnesses for these for these Y's and B. But since you lack full separation, uh, this can be sometimes uh, not a very useful set. So the strengthening is that this B consists of witnesses Y for the X's and A, but also vice versa, anything in B 
comes from some x and a so that phi x y holds. And then you have the adduction screen. Okay, so these are the two main theories uh, one is interested in indigenistic um, contexts, but you can actually go way beyond that. Uh, you can, for instance, you can uh, study large cardinals. Well, they are not large cardinals, they are large sets here. So you can add sets asserting um, where the sets are uh, inaccessible or where the sets are marlow. And for instance, you can also expand the language um, to accommodate elementary embeddings in the indigenistic context. So if you add, for instance, the symbol M and the symbol J, uh, so J uh, function symbol, uh, you can express that there is an elementary embedding. So if, for instance, if you add these axioms here, so the M, uh, you say that M is a transitive class and uh, all the axioms of IZF hold relativized to M. And with regard to J, the elementary embedding where you say it's non-trivial, so there is an X, so that X is in JX, and it's an elementary embedding, and you express it via this scheme here, uh, where um, the formula A here is from the original language of IZF, so it doesn't contain J and M. And so uh, a formula AX holds if and only if a JX holds, but A has to be relativized to M. So all the, quant the quantifiers have to be relativized to M. That's what it means. And then you can express something like um, intuitionistic, say, Reinhardt set theory. Uh, you can also um, find counterparts to um, like super compactness, hugeness, and, and so on. Right. So all of these uh, intuitionistic set theories are also interesting to study. <clears throat> And these days it might be even more interesting because as you perhaps know, um, uh, some researchers in set theory have studied um, uh, even extensions going beyond Reinhardt like Berkeley Cardinals and so on. Uh, it, it is known that in that context you cannot have the full axiom of choice yeah, because it gives an inconsistency. And so it might be interesting to study the intuitionistic counterparts of these um, classically very strong and actually intuitionistically also very strong set theories. Okay. Uh, oh. This slide, the one in between, I did not want. Sorry about that. Okay. Now I said today the main tool will be uh, Cleany realizability. Well, actually, uh, there are lots of different kinds of realizability, and the first one was started by, by Cleany. And uh, so in 1945, he gave a realizability interpretation of heighting arithmetic. And um, okay, so the idea is here you use um, programs E for Turing machines or let E can be the, uh, well, you have a listing of the uh, partial recursive functions. So E is, an, is the, the E's partial recursive function. Uh, and then uh, with these partial recursive functions, you do, a, do an interpretation of intuitionistic logic, which very much resembles the so-called brauer heighting kolmogorov interpretation. Okay. Um, let me just point out the interesting bits. So uh, in the case of disjunction, so E is a realizer for a disjunction. Well, E has to decide which of the disjuncts it wants to realize. If the first, so this E can be decoded or can, there's a projection function. So the, if the first projection is zero, then uh, the second projection should be a realizer for A. And if the first projection is not, zero, then the second projection should be a realizer for B. And then in the interesting cases are uh, implication. So it means that E realizes an implication if whenever you have a realizer for the antecedent, then you apply 
E to this uh, realizer and get a realizer for the succeeding of the implication. And in the case of quantifiers, um, well, it means that uh, E realizes a universally quantified statement if uh, for each natural number n, E applied to n is a realizer for the instance f of n. Okay. And in the case of the existential quantifier, uh, the realizer is supposed to provide a witness. So this is very similar, as I said, to the BHK interpretation. Uh, now, um, the realizability that Kleene used, uh, the first one was uh, basically what's called K1. So the realizers are Turing machine programs or, or programs for partial recursive functions. But actually, you can uh, use much more general um, structures. And these structures were first uh, identified by Schoenfinkel uh, in a talk in 1920. So he talked about uh, über die Bausteine der mathematischen Logik, which means the, about on the build, basic building blocks of mathematical logic. And uh, so these structures are these days called combinatorial algebras or partial combinatorial algebras. And um, they are structures uh, over which you can do computations. And uh, so these kind of combinators, as they were called later, K and S were already identified by, uh, by Schoenfinkel. And uh, so you, what, you get, what you have here, PCA is a structure M with a partial binary operation on M. And there are at least two elements in it, uh, K and S. And the thing is that if you first apply K to X, this is, this is always defined, and then apply the result to an arbitrary Y, you get X back. And the other S, um, what it does is if you apply S to X and we apply the result to Y and then apply that result to Z, that's the, if it's defined, it's the same as first applying X to Z and then applying Y to Z and then uh, applying the first result to the second result. And, and these are structures, this is enough basically to do uh, a nice theory of, uh, yeah, to do computations. Actually, Schoenfinkel did uh, only the total case where, where, this, where you have a total partial binary operation on M. Uh, the, um, the partial case, I think, was only identified much later, though it could have been identified very early on. Um, and I think it was Pfefferman who first used the partial case. Okay. Uh, and you can also make a theory of, from these structures also called PCA and has the obvious axioms. And here uh, I omitted the, the dot. Yeah, so the convention is usually that the, the dot, the operation is omitted, you just write the terms uh, without the dot. Okay. And there are lots of models, uh, lots of P PCAs. Uh, just one remark, very often one looks at so-called applicative structures. These are a bit richer, but basically you have a copy, you, you identify a copy of the natural numbers and you do case distinction on the natural numbers. But it turns out that any PCA can be expanded uh, uh, to, uh, to this richer applicative structure. Okay, so what are examples? Well, uh, the first cleaning algebra is where um, the operation is Turing machine application. The second cleaning algebra here, the underlying domain is, is bare space. And what you do is the operation is continuous function application. And then there are lots more. Uh, there are term models, then the graph models that play the role in yeah, models for the lambda calculus, Scott's D infinity model, uh, non-standard models of PA, you can do a set recursion over admissible sets. Basically, any notion of, of computation gives rise to a PCA. Recursion in higher type functionals, alpha recursion, and so on. So this is a very uh, 
rich collection of structures. And now uh, I would like to come to the main uh, technical tool. Uh, this is realizability, as I said before, but this kind of realizability is strikingly different from Keeney's 1945 realizability. And okay, I gave it the name generic realizability. Uh, this is actually this terminology I think is due to David McCarthy. And I'll explain soon what I mean by this kind of genericity. It's not the genericity usually related to forcing. Okay, so this type of realizability historically goes back to Kreisel and Schulstra, they used it for second order arithmetic. It was then used uh, uh, for set theories, for intentionistic set theories. Uh, well, I call them here intentional set theories, by which I mean that you just don't have the axiom of extensionality. And then the final step uh, was done by, by David McCarthy. So he then transferred it to uh, extensional set theory. And it's basically that the atomic case is dealt with like uh, you do in enforcing or Boolean value models. Okay, so to do um, <clears throat> realizability for set theories, um, one starts with a PCA A. Okay. And then uh, from the PCA, one generates a universe as follows. So the stages of this universe are denoted by VA alpha. And so here you see what happens is that um, going to VA of alpha means you take, you assume you have already defined VA of beta for beta less than alpha. So in intentionistic except theory, alpha, the ordinals are defined in the same way as classically. Yeah? Ordinals are transitive sets whose elements happen to be transitive sets. But of course, you don't have linearity as in the classical case. Okay, and then, so basically, so you have already defined the, um, the chunks VA beta for beta in alpha, and then you take the power set over the domain of A times VA beta for all these betas, then you union them up, and that's your VA alpha. And then, and then the whole uh, class structure for realizability VA is just the union of all these VA alphas. Uh, to look at this a little bit, what, how do the elements of this realizability universe look like? So if you take an A in an element of the A uh, and you take an X in A, well, how does it look like? Well, this X is going to be an ordered pair where the first component is E belongs to the PCA A, yeah? And the second component is just another denizen of the world, the A. The thing is that these elements of A, they, they come equipped or tagged with some extra information from the PCA, so some kind of computational information here on which certain realizes from namely the object, the elements of A can act. Okay, so that's the, uh, the realizability structure. And then you define a notion of realizability. Uh, so the realizers, our elements of the PCA. And then it, uh, the realizability, well, in the beginning, it goes very much like uh, in the Kleene 1945 realizability. This definitely applies to and, or, and to implication. But then we come to quantifiers and you see something surprising happens, namely, what is a realizer for universally quantified statement? So this is a statement over all sets, yeah? And this means that for each individual C from the realizability universe, E realizes, and now you 
substitute this C for the X and phi. And you see what happens is so the, the E here, the realizer doesn't take the C into account. It doesn't act on the C at all. It's it kind of, it's, it's a realizer for every instance. And, and this is the, the reason for giving it the name generic. So it only looks at these objects in the, in the set theoretic world VA as generic objects. Okay. And the same applies to the existential quantifier. Yeah. So just uh, the realizer just marches through. So that it just means there is a C in the in this world, so that E realizes phi of C. Uh, it's kind of a surprising kind of realizability. Uh, if you think about it, um, you will also realize actually that uh, it wouldn't be possible in any other way because, well, if I were to do this in like in the Klini case, then this realizer E would have to entail a witness for this uh, C so that phi C holds. But you know, in a, in a universe, and this realizer, if you want to realize maybe a large set action that, this, that, that exists and inaccessible, then it wouldn't be possible if you did it in the Klingy way because these E's here are from, they come from the PCA and they cannot contain this uh, huge object. Yeah? So it's, in some sense, it's clear that it has to be done in this way, but it's surprising that it works. Okay. Now the atomic case, I, on the previous slide, the atomic case wasn't there. Um, all right, how's that done? Well, the universe is built up inductively, yeah? And you have to follow this build up. And so if you have two, A, if these two objects AB belong to the realizability universe VA, then E realizes A is in B if, well, Remember that the B, the elements of this B here will be these order pairs. And so it means that you find a C so that the order pair built from the first part of the realizer, namely E0, and C is in B. And the second part of the realizer, the second projection E1, realizes that A equals C. So you see, because uh, um, yeah, so this the equality appears on the right hand side, and again the A appears here. This must be a recursive definition. So it's defined by transfinite recursion. And then similarly for the A equals B. Okay, so that's the definition of this uh, type of realizability. And uh, it has very interesting uh, consequences. So now you, um, most of the time, people just use maybe one or two. Um, of the PCAs. And uh, if you use <clears throat> the first cleaning algebra, so this means Turing machine application, you get a world in which some of the principles that are cherished in Russian constructivism <clears throat> are valid. For instance, the uh, Church's thesis, yeah, what hold in this universe. So all, so in this, internally in this world, in this world VK1, all functions from the naturals to the naturals are computable. If instead of K1, you take K2, the second Klini algebra, which is based on a bare space and continuous function application, you actually get a world uh, which is more uh, adapted to Brouwer's intuitionism. For instance, uh, many, so the, the many operations become uh, continuous. Uh, but of course, one could look at um, many, many more of these um, PCAs and find many more interesting worlds. <clears throat> I think this is one of the beautiful things about um, um, studying these realizability models that you, you end up with so many different set theoretic worlds. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> now I would like to go back to the to the Goodman result. So this was um, a conservativity result, adding the axioms 
the action of choice for finite uh, types doesn't yield new arithmetic statements. So just the definition here. So the finite types are, um, so we, so this FT here just defines the, the set of finite type symbols. So this O or zero is the lowest type, but that's just a type of natural numbers or omega in the set theoretic setting. And if you have uh, two of these finite types, sigma and tau, then just writing sigma tau, uh, or in this way here, uh, is another finite type and it denotes the, uh, the type of functions from f sigma to f tau. <clears throat> okay. And then we have, and in the future, I just write sigma tau without the parentheses around it. And with by ft, I will just denote uh, all the finite types. And uh, just one remark, um, where do the finite types exist? Well, for instance, the finite types exist in, in constructive Samuel Frank or set theory. And of course, they also exist in IZF. Yeah. Okay. And then, so here we have the, the choice axioms uh, associated to the, to the finite types. So if you have a combination for all X sigma, there is a Y tau, AXY, well, then you should be able to extract a function out of it, namely then there's a function of type sigma tau, which um, takes an object X sigma uh, to uh, in, into the type f tau, and we have that for all x sigma a x f x holds. So these are these axioms of choice. Okay, and uh, so what happens is uh, Goodman's result says if you add these choice axioms to a higher type um, heighting arithmetic then no new arithmetic statements are proved. Okay. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is um, this generic realizability can be in a certain sense beefed up to uh, what, I'm going to, what I'm going to call extensional realizability. Now extensional realizability has been studied before in connection with other notions of realizability, in particular, a realizability for HA. So for instance, Robin Grayson, uh, I think is maybe the first reference where you find something like that. Interestingly, he was in Münster at, at the time and I was a student there. So I had some contact with him at the time. Surprisingly, many, many years later, I used this stuff. Okay, uh, it was also used by Beeson, by Godeev, by Van Osten and Tolstra. But I think it was never used for this type of generic realizability for set theory. Okay, of course, but this is a very natural step. And uh, so this is now the joint work with Emanuele Fritaillon. And uh, so the previous realizability structure, as I said, uh, we would like to beef up uh, to um, take care of realizing of more extensionality. Okay. And so the difference now is again, we start with an arbitrary PCA that doesn't change, but the realizability universe uh, has another component, namely in the previous case, in the realizability universe before, there was only one copy of the domain of A. And here we have two copies instead. Yeah. And, and so that's the main change. And what this means is if you take uh, an inhabitant of this universe, A, so let's call it X, and then, you and then the elements Y of this X are triples. Yeah. Well, the first two components are from the PCA, the given PCA A, and, and Z is another inhabitant of this world. Yeah. And um, okay. And having now these basically these two realizers, this 
um, as an additional information. Uh, we will use it to express that uh, E and E prime are equal realizers of something. And okay, so the realizability definition looks now more involved. Um, the general pattern now is that instead, okay, I just flush the uh, flash up the, the whole thing here. So instead of having in front of this realizab realizability symbol, just having one realizer, we have two basically. And what we would like to define here is basically the notion that at these A and B from the PCA are equal realizers of some formula of set theory phi. Uh, so phi is a formula which of set theory which, which may con which con usually contains parameters from this uh, extensional un uh, realizability universe. Yeah. And there's an interesting thing I think here, and there's a connection to Martin Love type theory. Martin Love type theory. If you view, so the, um, the denizens, the inhabitants of types that can be viewed as proofs or also as realizers or as evidence. And uh, in Martin Love type theory, we have the identity type and um, which has made quite a splash over the last 15 years or so. And uh, so in a certain sense, there's a connection here. So we uh, we talk, we also talk about identity in a certain sense of realizers. Okay, now what happens is, um, what are the interesting cases? Maybe I jump to the case of um, the implication here. So here, uh, what does it mean that A and B are equal realizers of this implication? A uh, phi arrow psi. Well, it means that whenever we have equal realizers for phi, then applying A to C and on the other hand B to D yields equal realizers for the consequent psi. Yeah. And then, um, so that's the crucial part here. Um, well, as for the, um, I treated here the bounded quantifiers separately. Now for, in, in general, for the unbounded quantifiers, we have the same genericity here, namely that an equal realizer, equal realizers for universal statement means just that these are equal realizers for any instance simultaneously. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, extensional uh, realizability or more specifically extensional generic realizability. Okay. And usually um, there's some convention here, instead of writing A equals A realizes phi, just write A realizes phi. And uh, well, as I said, it's, it's very interesting to study uh, different uh, PCAs here and to indicate the PCA associated with this, this realizability, we sometimes use the subscript A here. Okay, now what happens? What kind of realizability theorems do we get with this type of realizability? Uh, one thing is that um, this realizability will uh, realize the axiom of choice in finite types. So the situation is maybe starting with the constructive similar Frankel set theory. If you add to it a CFT and you prove, yeah, and you prove any set theoretic statement, and then from the proof, one can effectively construct an application term so an application term is a term of the theory PCA, yeah, the abstract theory PCA, such that CZF proofs for any PCA A 
if one, eval one e evaluates the term in that PCA, then TA equals TA is a realizer for phi. Yeah. So this goes to say that this holds in a very, very uniform way. So the realizer that we construct, we just um, get out of, the, of the, out of the proof. It's an effective construction of the realizer. We do not say there exists some realizer, but we actually have a particular term. And this term then uh, provides a realizer for any PCA. Of course, the term has to, has to be evaluated in that in any given PCA. Okay, and the same um, result uh, you obtain if you do uh, if you do the construction with IZF, it's the same. And moreover, um, of course, these are kind of uh, very important theories, CZF and IZF, but you can add tons of other stuff and uh, get a realizability uh, theorem. So for for any of these theorems, you can add principles like certain choice principles that are okay in intuitionistic contexts, like dependent choice, the relativized dependent choice, even the presentation axiom. You can add large set axioms, and then you would get the same result. Okay, so that's very nice. So you, so this kind of realizability allows you to realize uh, these. Uh, finite type choice axioms. And then um, the idea is to combine it with the Goodman machinery. Um, and another confession, I stole the title for the talk basically from a section of a paper by Friedman and Shadroff. Uh, the, the paper is called Large Sets in Indigenistic Set Theory. And they also studied some uh, choice principles in finite types, namely these two here. Um, yeah. Namely, they, they studied special cases. So the first special case is the CAC stands for countable axiom of choice in finite types. So here you have a combination for all n. n is ranges over naturals. There is a y of type tau, phi and y, well, then you can find a function which produces the y from the n. And another is a dependent choice thing here. If you have for all x sigma, you have a y sigma, you find a y sigma so that phi x y holds, then given any x sigma, you can produce an omega sequence uh, given by this function f here, so that f zero is the given x, and for all n, phi of n, uh, f of n plus one holds. <clears throat> and then uh, they showed that these, if you add <clears throat> these principles to, um, for instance, to IZF, you do not generate uh, new arithmetic statements. So now uh, these are very special cases here. And basically to, to, to show this, you only need some kind of, um, <clears throat> You only need to work with the um, basically a, a form of 1945 realizability. Uh, with now with generic extensional realizability, you can show it. Um, you can prove all the finite uh, type axioms of choice, and um, you can combine it with the Goodman machinery to get conservativity. And uh, just a reminder of the Goodman machinery. Uh, just very, very briefly. So the Goodman machinery consists of uh, two steps. Uh, the first step is um, you, um, you basically do an extension of the first linear algebra K1. So instead of um, Turing machine application, you do Turing machine application where the Turing machine has attached to it an oracle, basically, as it's a partial function. And during the computation, you can uh, consult the oracle. The oracle is a partial function. And uh, if it's defined for your question, it gives you an answer and, and, and otherwise it, nothing happens. And then basically you do, um, you come up with a PCA that has this, um, this oracle 
which enshrines this oracle computation. And then uh, given any uh, arithmetic statement, it is possible to define a notion of forcing depending on the statement A here, uh, which is based on finite sequences of numbers. And so basically what holds if, if you take any, any P in the uh, forcing set P, then you can find an extension and the extension forces that if E realizes A, then A is true. Yeah? And moreover, you have a certain absoluteness for forcing and with regard to uh, arithmetic statement, namely, if an arithmetic statement is forced, then, then it's true. Yeah. And so this machinery was used by, by Goodman and, and also by Beeson to get this kind of conservativity result. And uh, yeah, and now with the, and combining this now with um, <clears throat> A generic extensional realizability, uh, you get that um, IZF uh, plus um, the actual choice for finite types is conservative over IZF for arithmetic sentences. Okay, so this now is my last slide here. Um, uh, this is, I think, this is just the beginning of what you can do with generic extensional realizability. Um, so recall that the, um, the new choice principles we added to intuitionistic set theories were choice principles for finite types. Um, but why stop there? Actually, you can go to transfinite types. Already Hilbert did this in his uh, paper on the infinite. Um, so you can, for instance, go to the transfinite types if you basically uh, collect all the finite types into one type, yeah? Like you can do in martin love type theory. In martin love type theory, you have these uh, dependent type constructors, sigma and pi. And then uh, the conjecture is that actually using extensional realizability, you can uh, realize um, accents of choice related to these transfinite types with extensional realizability and the Goodman uh, machinery. Yeah. So this, there, there's much more here. And already it has been shown actually for CZF, if you add an axiom saying, that all the, the types generated from the type of natural numbers via um, the dependent type constructors, sigma and pi, that you can add for all of these uh, types uh, an axiom of choice like it holds in Martin Love type theory. And then you get conservativity over CZF uh, if, you, uh, if you adopt these axioms. Okay. So that's one thing, go transfinite with the types. Uh, another uh, thing you can do is you can explore a different, what different PCAs give you. In particular, the PCA K2 based on bare space and continuous function application is very nice if you want to get Brauerian continuity principles. And so we haven't explored this, but uh, it seems it's possible to combine this now with certain axioms of choice. So one would like to figure out, okay, if we have this, if we have continuity, how much choice can we add? So this could be explored. Uh, furthermore, uh, <clears throat> there is a way of getting uh, meta mathematical results about derived rules. So you can, and, um, one conjecture is that if you combine generic extensional realizability with truth, you should be able to show closure of many set theories under the A, C, sigma, tau rules for finite types, sigma and tau. And the final thing is, I would like to mention is, 
Um, so if you want to basically, if the idea is that you want to maybe somehow force, not in the sense of forcing, but you want to force the axiom of choice to hold uh, for certain larger parts of the universe, yeah, you might be able to do this. Namely, if you take a chunk of the universe, which has some description, uh, you may use this chunk and create out of it uh, a partial combinatorial algebra. And then if you look at the world from the point of view of VXA, if the given PCA has a natural representation inside this world, you should be able to obtain uh, choice principles for this particular uh, partial combinatorial algebra. Yeah? And this might be very interesting, in particular, if you have maybe elementary embeddings, you may be, maybe you want to um, use the part of the universe up to the first point that gets moved and create um, a partial combinatorial algebra out of it. And then maybe look at the realizability uh, structure you get out of it and what happens there. So this is, I think it's, it's unexplored, but uh, it might be an exciting project. Okay, that's the end. Thanks very much for listening.